Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are going to talk to you in this video about sometimes when we take limits and our function goes off to some sort of positive or negative infinite value on the graph. So for a limit to exist, the function needs to approach a specific y value and that y value needs to be a real number. When we say the limit exists, we should be able to say the limit is 4 or negative 10 or some real number. Remember that positive and negative infinity are not actually real numbers. But when functions approach these values, it's more descriptive to state positive or negative infinity rather than just saying that the limit does not exist. The limit may not exist because we go to different values, but if we're going off to an infinite value, even though it's not a real number value and the limit does not exist, it provides more description for us to say positive or negative infinity. So we'll still make a mental note that the limit does not exist, but then we'll have a reason why the limit does not exist. Let's just take a look at a bunch of examples. So here I have the graph of y equals 1 over x. I want to look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side of 1 over x. So if I'm approaching 0, which is the y-axis, I'm approaching from the negative side, I'll be on this branch down here in quadrant 3. You can see that that branch is going negative without bound. So this first limit here will say that that is negative infinity. For the second one, approaching 0 as an x value from the plus side, so we'll be in quadrant 1 here, going up unbounded, which means we're heading toward positive infinity from the right of 0, from the positive side of 0. Now for the overall limit, as x approaches 0 on this graph, we are going to a negative infinite value on one side and a positive infinite value on the other side. Since these are not the same, we use the same rule in stating that no, these don't go toward the same value from both sides. So we would say, in general, the limit does not exist here specifically. Looking at the graph of 1 over x squared, so now you can see my graph is in quadrants 1 and 2. As we're approaching x equals 0 from the negative side, you'll notice that now we are on this branch in quadrant 2, and that branch, as we approach the y-axis, x equals 0, that is going positively infinite. So we go ahead and say positive infinite value here. When we are approaching x equals 0 from the positive direction, that would be in quadrant 1, so we'd actually be going on this branch over here, but we would still be going infinitely positive as well as we approach 0, so positive infinity there. And indeed, since these are the same sign of infinite value, then we'll go ahead and say, although the limit does not exist in general, it's more descriptive for us to say the graph of this actually goes positively infinite from both sides of 0. Looking at the graph of tangent x, so as x approaches pi over 2 from the negative direction, so here's pi over 2, you can see we have an asymptote here as well like we had on 1 over x and 1 over x squared. So as I approach my vertical asymptote from the negative side, from the left, that would be on this branch to the left of pi over 2, so that's actually approaching a positive infinite value. And if we approach x equals pi over 2 from the positive side, from the right of this asymptote, we would actually be on this branch approaching from the right side, from the positive side. And as we approach that asymptote, we're coming in from the right, we would actually be going down off the edge of our paper there. So negative infinity for that limit. And since these are not the same sign of infinity, we would say overall the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of tangent x does not exist. Again, as we approach the vertical asymptote from the left side, from the negative side, we're going up forever. As we approach from the right side, we're going down forever. Different directions there, so the overall limit does not exist. Looking a similar thing at cotangent, let's say, so at, as x approaches pi, so here's my x approaches pi. And if we approach pi from the negative side of things, that will be from the left side. So the left side of this asymptote would be down here, and that will be a negative infinite value there. So this limit is negative infinity. For the second one, if we approach x equals pi from the positive side, then that will be on this piece up here, approaching from the right toward the asymptote, and that's going to go positively infinite. And looking at the limit overall, these are not the same sign of infinity, so the limit as x approaches pi in general of cotangent x does not exist. Looking at one more rational function here, so I've got actually uh, you know, an asymptote over here at negative 2. 
So some funny things are happening at negative 2. I also have a vertical asymptote over here at positive 1. So this one here, limit as x approaches negative 2 from the negative side. So we look at our asymptote here at negative 2. On the left side of that, the graph is actually going negatively infinite. So we say negative infinity for this limit. If we have the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the positive direction, from the right side, so the right side of the asymptote, we actually are on this part of the graph. And that is going up off the edge of the screen. So that would be a positive infinity for this one. And then since these are opposite signs, we would say this limit down here does not exist. Okay, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to look at infinite limits around infinite discontinuities, vertical asymptotes. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.